Jim Friesling, the president and co-founder of New Oak Capital, is joining us this morning to weigh in on some of these reports. Jim, two questions. Which device would you rather buy as a consumer, and which company would you rather buy as an investor? Um, well, first of all, Google is not that same geeky company that launched uh, uh, quite a few years ago, and I think uh, uh, they're trying to open up uh, the mobile industry in the same way that uh, the PC market opened up to allow uh, really uh, the web to just to, to grow dramatically. So, so you'd be open to this new phone? I, I would be open to this phone, although I will say I'm a BlackBerry person, and uh, I'm still uh, shying away from the, the sexy smartphones, but I'll say this. It looks like a hell of a device, and again, um, it, it's going to be a big issue for them to uh, be more app-driven. So you'd prefer to buy that device? than by the tablet by Apple. Um, I'm not up to the tablets yet, um, and I think <laughs> Apple is facing uh, where the smartphones are well uh, embraced, and, and right. certainly uh, uh, I think it's become standard equipment for, for everybody. Uh, the tablets and these readers uh, are not fully embraced Which uh, company yet. do you like better? Uh, uh, I, I, you're giving me good choices, I'll tell you that, uh, in terms of uh, uh, Google and then Apple. And I certainly love the way Apple uh, continues to build its brand on coolness and fresh and innovative. Uh, but I'll say this, I like what Google's doing in the space. And if you're going to force me to choose, I'm, I'm taking Google. You would Google. buy Google stock before Apple stock now, As even, a, even though both of them are fairly attractive. I like, I like what both are doing in this space. So that tablet business, which other companies are already in, uh, from Apple, I guess their hope is that this is kind of like the early part of the last decade was for the MP3 player, which is now called by everybody the iPod, because if they can turn it into something, even though other companies had made MP3 players before mm -hmm. iPods, they essentially cornered the market on that. Do you think they'll be able to do it this time around? Uh, I wouldn't bet against them. I mean, they're going to be focusing on software, and they're going to be focusing on deliverable of, uh, delivery of content. Yeah. And they've done that with the MP3 players better than anyone else. Uh, so certainly when it comes to these tablets, uh, I think it's going to be something to watch. But again, the tablet itself has not been as widely embraced uh, today uh, as a smartphones, which is why when given the choice, I'll, I'll, I'll take what Google's doing in the Nexus. Real quick, as we look ahead into the year uh, that's before us, is tech really the place to be? You said both companies look attractive. Is, is that true of multiple companies in this sector versus, let's say, companies that you could pick in, in the housing market or in retail? How does it add up? Um, I mean, I certainly think it's an important sector, and, 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 you're, and again, these are two of the leaders uh, of, of, of the tech sector. Um, it forced us to start looking at different industries, though. Uh, I think a little later in the show, we'll be talking about, the, for me, the financial space, mm -hmm. um, with, with, with rates continuing to stay low. So I'm still leaning towards banks uh, and some of those areas. Uh, but again, in this tech space, uh, these are two winners, in my opinion. Good tease, Jim, because you're right. You will be talking about that later. Jim will be with us uh, throughout the hour. Um, in the meantime, though, it's back over to Well, and speaking of competition, we also have some headlines coming from Tata Motors today. Uh, Jim Friesling, the president of New Oak Capital, is joining us to talk about this ever-changing auto market. And some of the headlines that we're getting, um, Jim, from Tata Motors is, is talking about the chairman talking about launching this Nano, the small Tata car, uh, in the U.S. in about three years. So more competition is coming for this industry. Can it survive the way that it is right now? Well, in the U.S. industry, you have a clear winner in, in Ford, uh, GM coming in a, a distant second and Chrysler, uh, obviously, a distant third. Is that a winner, like a, a real winner that's a fundamentally good company or more like a winner because they're the best of the bad? Um, I'm going to put Ford in the winner category. They like stay, the real, true I, winner. I think a true winner. Um, they've gotten themselves off of... Uh, um, the, uh, the, sa the sales to uh, uh, rental car companies and, 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 the, uh, and, and, and whatnot, and I think they've, uh, they've, they've clearly fared far better. And the December numbers are encouraging. Uh, I think it's, it's, a fra it's a fragile industry still, um, but, but it is encouraging that we are getting good numbers for December, and we'll have, a, uh, I guess, 11 million annualized units uh, for the year, which uh, for, well off the high, but, but still, again, better than we were Starting to ago. turn some sort of a corner, you think? I mean, because when we go back to middle to late last year, obviously the industry was propped up uh, by the cash for clunkers program, but now as that fades away and it has to survive on its own, will it be able to, um, you know, prolonged into late this year, early next, and what have you? I mean, I, I think the debate is going to be the large purchases such as autos uh, versus uh, the concerns over, uh, again, job uh, uncertainty mm -hmm. um, and even, uh, I guess, still loss of values in homes. Uh, but low interest rates and some, some good economic data uh, suggest that, that the consumers are feeling a little better about things. Uh, certainly their 401ks and, and other portfolios give them reason to believe that yeah. uh, they can extend themselves and make these types of purchases. So uh, I think a good sign for, for the industry uh, with the U.S. Uh, automakers still and you're uh, trusting that. I just, the only reason why we ask is that Cash for Clunkers has been deemed a success from, from really uh, both sides of the aisle in, in, in D.C. I mean, there's some critics, but overall it's deemed as a success. We saw some really heavy incentives in December to boost these sales. Um, 
you, do you still feel comfortable with that? Because the question is whether or not we can actually repeat those incentives in the new year. And, and I think that's also uh, symbolic of what's going on overall with, uh, with nearly $800 billion of uh, stimulus into the economy. The question is, is when, when the consumer or when the economy has to stand on its own and when these programs pull out, uh, will we be able to uh, continue to, uh, uh, I guess, to stand uh, right. and grow without this stimulus? I think that's it's, it's exactly what's going on in the auto industry. The Clunkers program was a success in, in driving sales. A whole lot of uh, incentives, you're absolutely correct, uh, drove the good numbers for December. Now the question is, will the consumer continue to spend? And, and the early indications are that the answer is, it appears to be uh, uh, encouraging, I would say. Right, So, it's, but we're still not sure until, still we, uh, <laughs> until we see it. Okay, Jim Frischling, thank you very thank much. You. We'll be back in a few minutes. Over to Ashley now once again in London. All right, Instant Audit on these new CEOs from Jim Frischling of New O Capital, who's still with us in studio this morning. Um, all right, I guess we could ask it the same way we asked the other technology question earlier this hour in terms of if you had to pick a job besides your own, of course, <laughs> uh, which one would you rather have? Bank of America or uh, Morgan Stanley? Uh, like the earlier topic, these are these are good choices. Um, really? I think they're very good choices. Morgan Stanley, uh, I think, is in a very good position uh, to do uh, to do well uh, in 2010. I think the upgrades, while premature, uh, certainly we've already seen premature upgrades such as uh, Nobel Peace Prizes to mm -hmm. uh, or first-term presidents. Uh, but the fact, <laughs> sorry, a little dig there. But um, but I do think that Morgan Stanley is ripe to continue to build on what it's incredible at, which is M&A and advisory, and also under the leadership of Mr. Gorman, get back into fixed income trading uh, and really the hardcore securities business, which they had shied away from a little bit towards uh, for, for a good part of 09. You said that you're bullish on the financials, really, I, of the sectors of 2010. That's what you like. Why is that? Um, again, I think uh, it's a combination of, A, the current low interest rates, and I think uh, the government's collective... Uh, unwillingness to take the punch bowl uh, away from this uh, this party. I don't think anybody is going to want to be responsible for uh, potentially deflating or taking away, uh, let's say, some of the uh, uh, the, the, some of these financial uh, the companies' ability to continue to a get healthier, right. and in the hopes of once they're healthy, to lend. You which don't is think why, like, that is kind of peaked to some extent, and, and will change when regulatory reform passes and interest rates start to go up, and what have you later in the year, presumably. I mean, I think the biggest threat to these uh, to these entities, particularly the likes of uh, of, of, of uh, Bank of America, is right. uh, the regulatory environment. But I think the bark is going to be. Um, for better or worse, bigger than the bite. Um, and I think uh, you're not going to see uh, a Glass-Steagall esque. So the lobbying is working for these I companies. I think the lobby is going to work. And, and again, at the end of the day, um, what I like about uh, Bank of America and Warren Stanley is uh, as these institutions become healthier, uh, the competition uh, has, has uh, dropped off dramatically for them. Uh, that's why Goldman, I think, had a tremendous year in 2009, was taking advantage of uh, the lack of a Lehman and, and, and a Bear and, and, and the other uh, hobbled institutions. But what institutions. makes you specifically, is it, is it the trading desk, is it the trading action? that you feel confident about for Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, because at the same time we're talking about the banks, we have stories about how bankruptcies uh, for the U.S. consumers are at mm -hmm. uh, highs that we haven't seen in years. The consumer is really still struggling, and that's the bread and butter for, for a bank like Bank of America. Um, I think the Merrill Lynch, to, bank, to your question about Bank sure. of America, the Merrill Lynch uh, acquisition is going to uh, actually be um, a, a big win. I mean, I, I actually say a home run. In, in fact, if I were uh, Mr. Moynihan, I wouldn't separate so far uh, from uh, Ken Lewis, uh, because I think Mr. Lewis's legacy uh, will certainly get a rebound when Merrill proves uh, to be a, a big driver of revenue. Because of that reason? Uh, because, and, and whether he paid too much or didn't pay enough or whether there was information uh, and, and, and Mr. Thane is out because of it, but the fact remains Merrill and B of A uh, are going to uh, prove to be a, a winner, and I actually I think the combination will give JP a run for its money. So while Morgan Stanley has to combat uh, uh, Goldman Sachs and Bank of America has to uh, battle JP Morgan, I think these are actually fair fights, right. uh, which is why I'm actually uh, I, I like uh, I like both uh, I like both stocks and and the prospects for 2010 for well, both companies. They hope it be a that the $29 share share price for that deal is long forgotten if it's successful in the long. I won't long bring term. It up. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just did. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you. All right. Uh